Uh, well, this uh, evening, my colleague uh, Chin and myself are going to speak about uh, quantum cryptography. And uh, it has been said uh, that uh, quantum crypto is uh, probably the most uh, advanced cryptographic scheme ever conceived. But uh, as we'll show you tonight, it's not flawless, and we are going to report at least one flaw. Before I get uh, more into the details, I would like to mention that uh, this work actually is a joint collaboration uh, involving four universities. Uh, the work was actually originated by the Norwegian Institute of Science and Technology, and later on it was joined by uh, the National University of Singapore, uh, the Royal Institute of Technology in Sweden, and uh, the Polytechnical uh, State University of St. Petersburg. For more details, you, you can visit uh, the website of the Norwegian University. Here's a brief outline of the presentation. I will uh, start by uh, briefly reminding you about the uh, general concepts behind quantum cryptography. Then I will present to you uh, one general quantum hacking strategy, which is actually based on uh, an intercept recent attack. And this attack is going to target the single photon detectors which are incorporated in our quantum crypto systems. And actually most of the quantum crypto systems available on the market, they use avalanche photodiodes. So I'm going to discuss a bit how those avalanche photodiodes are working at the single photon level. And then I'm going to show you that uh, surprisingly when those uh, avalanche photodiodes are submitted to bright illumination, you can control them and you can then hack the uh, quantum crypto systems. Then uh, Chin will take over and he will present an attack on a real uh, quantum crypto system together with the hardware demo. So you will see why we carry this uh, 30 kilos uh, box of equipment. And uh, one thing about this uh, real uh, quantum crypto system is that it is built with a homemade single photon detectors. So later on, I'm going to discuss how you can actually hack commercial units. And hopefully there will be time for final remarks and questions. So first, a, a brief uh, uh, intro of the uh, general concepts behind uh, quantum cryptography, which is also known as quantum key distribution or QKD. Since it's a hacking conference, I guess you, you know already the name of the usual suspects. So there is Alice uh, Sender, Bob Receiver, and Eve in the middle playing the game of the eavesdropper. On that picture, you can see Eve uh, writing letters on a piece of paper and throwing the piece of paper to Bob. And uh, well, in uh, quantum crypto, we don't use piece of paper. We, we use uh, single particles of light, single photons, and uh, we actually use one single photon per bit. And uh, each bit of information can be encoded uh, on a property of the single photon, it can be encoded on the phase, or in the case of the example discussed tonight, the, the bit can be encoded on the polarization of the single photon. For instance, if a photon is uh, detected with uh, an horizontal polarization, you can attribute to it the bit value zero. And uh, if you detect the photon with vertical polarization, you can attribute the uh, bit value one. And there are several reasons to use only one single photon per bit. Obviously, you don't want to, because if you have two, there's one photon for Bob and one photon for Eve, the eavesdropper, that you don't want. Another reason is that when you work at the uh, single photon level, you enter the realm of quantum mechanics. And uh, then the security is granted by the laws of uh, quantum mechanics. And you cannot break the laws. At least that's what you are told. And those laws bear several names. Uh, one you might have here is uh, Heisenberg Uncertainty Principle. And in plain words, this uh, principle states that observation causes perturbation. So if Eve tries to observe, to measure, the state of the single photon, she will disturb this state, and this way it can be detected. 
Another way of looking at it is uh, uh, invoking what is called the no cloning theorem. And basically, this no cloning theorem states that in the quantum world, there is no perfect copy machine. You cannot copy an unknown quantum state. This is forbidden by quantum mechanics. An alternative way to look at it is under view, the view of uh, complementarity. Uh, I've put pictures of Alice and Bob, and uh, I mean... <laughs> So musically speaking, you could say that Alice and Bob complement each other, but uh, you wouldn't want uh, Alice to sing one of Bob's songs. So, in a way, they complement each other, but they're also incompatible with each other. And complementarity exists in, in physics with uh, several other variables, so we say several other observables. For instance, you might remember, uh, if you study quantum mechanics, that you cannot measure simultaneously the position and the momentum of a particle. And uh, th that is be believed to be a, a fundamental limitation of, of quantum mechanics. But here it, it is turned as an advantage to uh, uh, actually detect an eavesdropper. And, uh, well, let's go back to, to, to the case of quantum crypto here, where we have one single photon per bit, and where the bit is encoded on the polarization. Here also, uh, complementarity comes into play. And for instance, you, you cannot measure simultaneously uh, the polarization uh, of the photon in the horizontal vertical basis and in the uh, uh, diagonal basis rotated by 45 degrees. Those two bases are incompatible in the sense of complementarity. So for instance, uh, if uh, Eve uh, catches uh, a photon uh, which has been uh, encoded in the horizontal vertical basis. It's a piece of cake for Eve to, to measure the bit value. She just has to take, uh, you see here, a polarizing beam splitter and two single photon detectors. And the polarizing beam splitter here will, make the dis will help to distinguish between horizontally and uh, vertically polarized photons. Likewise, if uh, the photon is sent in the diagonal basis, it's a piece of cake for Eve to measure the bit value. She just has to use a half-wave plate here, and this half-wave plate will uh, rotate the polarization from diagonal to horizontal vertical. And then you just need to plug a polarizing beam splitter which, and two detectors, and you will be able to uh, 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 measure the bit value, either 0 and 1. But if you don't know in which uh, basis the photon has been sent, then Eve is in trouble. And uh, because of, of complementarity, she, she doesn't know which basis to choose. For instance, if the photon is sent in the diagonal basis, like here, and that Eve tries to measure the uh, polarization state in the wrong basis, well, this state at the PBS will get random outcome, completely random outcome. So it can get no information in, in this case. And uh, you might say that uh, Bob will be in trouble because he doesn't know either in which state the photon is sent by Alice. He doesn't know if the photon is, is sent in the horizontal vertical basis or in the diagonal basis. But in the case of Bob, it's not really a problem as we will see now. So here is uh, a general uh, QKD protocol as it is uh, implemented. So in this case, Alice makes uh, two random choices of basis. She ch uh, randomly chooses bit value, 0 and 1, and she also chooses the basis in which she will send her photon, either horizontal, vertical, or diagonal. And Bob also makes a random choice of basis. He, he uh, randomly choose also the, the measurement basis. And this is illustrated on the previous slide here by this uh, extra beam splitter, which randomly selects one basis or the other. And what happens then is that Alice and Bob, they can keep the bits for which they have used the same basis. Because same basis means uh, same bit value.